After Operation Bonehammer, I was given a rare chance to relax for the better part of a week. Not that I could relax, of course. I was too busy worrying about the whole Mordena situation. Dragonova's team could not get back soon enough. Fortunately, there was the usual array of tasks to take care of around the Avenger, which kept me reasonably distracted. First, Tygen had finished coming up with blueprints for magnetic versions of our heavier weaponry, so I quickly allocated resources to the engineering department to put them into full production. It was some surprisingly good work, though I couldn't help but notice the Viper sprawled out on Tygen's operating table. I guess he got a little bored while he was working on all those weapon designs. I decided there was no point in scolding him over it. He seemed to do his best work when he was allowed to cut things up. So instead, I just accepted his report and then passively encouraged him to keep up the good work by signing off on his request to requisition one of the muton corpses from cold storage. He was, of course, quite enthusiastic about the new research project. After that, I swung through the engineering department to check on their progress with our new facilities. The new training center was almost finished, but Lily wanted to know what we should do with some of the other space we had recently freed up. After giving it some thought, I decided it was time to reward the engineering team for their hard work. They had made multiple requests for the Proving Ground facility, and Tygen needed that for some more esoteric projects anyway, so I gave them the go-ahead to get started on it. Eager to focus on the new project, the engineering team quickly finished putting the training center together. It immediately piqued the interest of several of our soldiers, and I saw at least a half-dozen of them making use of the new equipment. I'll be curious to see what kind of effect it has on their battlefield performance. Before I knew it, the week had passed, and we finally received word from Dragonova and her team. I'm not really sure what I was expecting, but when the call finally did come in, it was about as bad as it could get. Apparently, Mordena had discovered the Covert Ops team and had reacted poorly. They were under attack, and they needed immediate extraction. I hurried to the Situation Room to oversee what Bradford quickly dubbed Operation Shadow Tower. My rocky relationship with Mordena would just have to wait. There were more important things to focus on for the time being. You've got no time to waste. Break cover and move to the extraction point on the double. Hey, Retcon Raider here, and welcome back to episode 10. Once again, it looks like we're dealing with an ambush mission. And, uh, right off the bat, I'd like to point out that this map looks very similar to the one from our last ambush mission. Says I, am to obey. I guess it's not a big deal. It just, uh, it's a little surprising in a game with procedurally generated maps. I guess we'll end up doing exactly what we did last time. We're going to get to the high ground... Travel through the apartments as far as they'll take us, and then, uh, make a final sprint to the evac zone. More of the one, are coming. your team is compromised. We're picking up Advent Response Forces inbound on your position. Gotta Just go. like last time, it looks like Advent sending in okay, some reinforcements after us on turn two. So, we're just going to set up for an ambush. I'll watch closely. It looks pretty standard. One officer and one trooper. There we have a patrol moving here. Get back, Hmm. Well, as far as ambushes go, I've seen better. We wounded the officer, but otherwise didn't land any hits. According to the damage projection, Mark should theoretically be able to take out either of these guys in one hit, so... I think we're going to focus on killing the soldier first. Okay, well, um, let's take out the officer then. Well, that does put us in a tough spot. We've still got two enemies on the field, and only one attack remaining. As long as Dragonova actually hits, she should definitely be able to kill one of these targets. 
but then the other will be free to counterattack us during the alien turn. I think we're going to need to prioritize the officer. He comes with some basic command abilities, plus a plasma grenade, and we really don't want to have to deal with that. I'm on the move. Well, that takes care of one threat. Now let's just see what the trooper does. Oh, he, uh, it turns out he has a grenade too. Well then. Okay, well, obviously that could have gone a lot better. Mark and Don are both pretty badly hurt, and we've got a Lost Swarm incoming. I think we need to get back to the high ground to avoid being overwhelmed. The Lost don't have any ranged attack, so as long as we block off the ladder and kill that trooper, we should be able to buy ourselves a turn. Don is understandably nervous about getting back up on that balcony. Looks like the Lost Swarm didn't move out far enough for us to actually shoot at them, so let's just spend this turn regrouping. Go help them out. Don and Dragonova will just reload their guns and get themselves back onto Overwatch. We still don't have visual on the Losts, and the uh, building is starting to fall apart, so let's start pushing forward again. I don't see any dashers in that there? swarm, so they shouldn't be able to reach us in a single turn. Then we can dispatch them once they're up in the apartment with us. Alright, so we just pinged an alien pod, but our more immediate concern is this Lost Swarm. Yep, that climbing animation is just as goofy as ever. Nice. Okay, obviously, uh, first thing we need to do is clear out the rest of these lost. And that takes care of that. Let's start continuing through this apartment complex. We'll move along the buildings as far as we can and peek outside of windows periodically to see if there are any other threats waiting for us. I am at your service. I can already see the same elevated train platform from the last ambush map. I'm just going to assume the entire map layout is identical. It looks clear outside though, so let's push into the next apartment. I guess that'll be okay.
And we have another incoming swarm. I'm not sure why the game feels it necessary to show me that animation, though. I clearly don't have line of sight on them. Anyway, it's not a problem just yet, so let's keep pushing on. It looks like this is the end of the apartment building here. So once we get over there, we'll go down to street level, and then I'm assuming it'll be a short, straight shot to the evac zone. I will reposition. I go where I'm needed. Still no enemies in sight, so let's move Mark and Don up. Moving out. Now, obviously we're not going to move down to street level just yet. Dragonova's still under stealth and Mark and Don are lagging behind. So instead, we're going to camp out up here on the balcony, block off the ladder access, and get a better view of the street below. But it still looks clear, so let's bring Mark and Don up. Tired of waiting around. I'm, I'm trusting you here. I'll keep an eye on Overwatch. Affirmative. Covering now. You hear that? Ah, and there's that Lost Swarm. Well, I think we've pretty clearly established by this point that they're a non-threat. Yeah, Let's go ahead and thin out their numbers a bit more before we move down to the street. That takes care of the swarm, but let's take a moment to reload our guns and we'll move down next turn. No one will come get some. On Overwatch. It still looks clear, so let's go ahead and get Dragonova down there. My life is in your hands. You will never hide from me. There's an alien patrol nearby. Okay, we've got a single wandering purifier. That should be no problem. Dragonova will go ahead and soften him up, and then Mark or Don will finish him off. Hmm. Though he did move into a pretty well-fortified position. Mark can't quite reach him with a frag grenade, so I think we're going to have to take a chance here. We'll move Mark up onto the uh, overpass, and then he'll lob the grenade from there. It looks like the double explosion has attracted yet another swarm, but, like I said before, they're really so. a non-threat. I, I like that one lost who just randomly decided to climb onto that balcony. I guess it'll give him a better view of the guy who's about to shoot him. Let's do this. And now let's bring Don down to take care of the rest. 
I'm not sure how his accuracy will be from that kind of range, but only one way to find out. Okay, I'll go. That's one. I got it, right? That's two. Check it before you get too close. That's three. Oh, I definitely got that one. Burn up the ammo fast. And that's four. It's dead. Back on the fire power over here. I will go. No place for you to go now. An alien scouting party. And we've got another purifier in our sights. Definitely not going to engage this one just yet. Huh. Well, he just walked the other way, so I guess we'll start slowly edging our way forward. But we'll keep our guys on overwatch just in case he comes back. Okay, still nothing. Let's move up even further. But if we don't get visual this time, next turn we're just going to sprint for the evac zone. As you order, Commander. I know where you are. I found their patrol. Oh, well. We got visual on two pods. That complicates things a little. Um, I don't think we'll engage this turn. Yeah, Mark and Don are still lagging behind, so I think it's best not to take any chances just yet. I guess that'll be okay. Watching comes now. Scanning. Scanning. Well, the trooper left, but the purifier came back. I guess this is as good a chance as any to take him out. He'll scamper into cover as soon as Mark and Don move, so we'll take our first shot at him with Dragonova. That should set him up as an easy kill. Wow, and she's still under stealth. Okay, Mark and Don both have visual on the purifier, but their chances to hit him are less than optimal. Don's still got a grenade, so I think that's our best bet to take this guy out. What's over there? That's down! Okay, well, he... he didn't... He didn't take any damage. Um, I guess I must have misclicked. That's unfortunate. Nice. That definitely takes a lot of the pressure off. And we've got some loot on the field. Okay, let's bring Don up and clear out this swarm. You know, I like a lot of the things that War of the Chosen adds to the game. But the more I fight the Lost, the more I feel like they're just kind of a waste of time. They're just not very interesting. And Don's out of action, so I guess we'll 
let Mark finish off the last of them. Mark can reload his gun and... You know what? Uh, he'll use that teamwork action to uh, remind Don to reload his gun as well. Locked and loaded. And then we'll have Dragonova go ahead and grab that loot. Says I am to obey. An auto loader and a superior speed implant. Not bad. Your material is Give me secure. time to reload. There's no sign of that Advent Trooper, and I'm pretty tired of fighting zombies, so let's just go ahead and sprint to the evac zone and call this a win. I will reposition. I'm leaving. Good to go. Will do. I'm going. I'm gone. All members of Wraith One have been successfully evac. The aliens sure know how to turn a planet into a Halloween theme park. Zombie swarms. Just what we needed. Everyone came back from Operation Shadow Tower alive, but Mark and Don would be bedridden for weeks. It was another sobering moment. Again, my relationship with Mordena had almost gotten some of my men killed, but at least it hadn't been a total loss. Dragonova presented me with her report. Apparently, they had managed to confirm the location of Mordena's hideout. They just hadn't been able to find a way to infiltrate it. The Reapers were particularly keen on this development and pledged additional support for our future operations. Given the way Mordena had recently begun lashing out, I had to take the idea that she was targeting the Avenger a little more seriously. Working with the Reapers, we pinpointed a method of countering her efforts, but I would need two of our most confident, or maybe suicidally foolhardy, recruits to handle it. Purge Dome and Mr. Shellshock seemed to fit the bill. I was also starting to receive more and more frequent warnings about various Avatar Project facilities being constructed. It seemed like Advent was accelerating their research in the wake of our Black Sight raid. I still wasn't sure what to think of the project, but given Advent and Mordena's recent behavior, I had to assume the worst. It was time to start expanding our operations so we could investigate more of those mysterious facilities. We started by locating and repurposing some additional communications equipment, which we put towards establishing official communications with the resistance cell in New Brazil. It would take a few days for Bradford to work out a deal with them, but in the meantime I checked in with my other officers. Tygen had finished hacking up that muton, and while he hadn't really come up with any conclusive theories, he had been so inspired by his butchery that he had doodled up some new blueprints for enhanced explosive devices. I quickly forwarded his new designs to Lily Shen so she could put them into production. Afterwards, I ordered him to continue along that line of research, coming up with more creative weaponry for our field troops. I encouraged him to use his imagination. He seemed to like that. Unfortunately, all of our recent activities hadn't gone unnoticed by Advent, or, more specifically, The Chosen. That tool, Don Slayer, had managed to track down the truck thieves' encampment, again and they were once again under siege. I quickly set aside all other distractions and instead focused on assembling a rescue team. When it came to rescue missions, Mark and Don would normally have been my go-to guys, but after Operation Shadow Tower, they were both unavailable. Instead, I chose Lieutenant Phoenix to head up the mission, and he was backed up by Praetal Mox and Demon, both of whom seemed to have quite the grudge against the Warlock. I rounded out the team with Rorschach and his buddy Malachi, neither of whom had gotten much time in the field lately. The Grey Shirts were pretty antsy about this mission, which Bradford had ominously dubbed Operation Broken Doom. Apparently, they were predicting that this would be our most difficult mission yet. Hopefully, the men would be able to handle it. The aliens 
just hit one of the resistance outposts hard. There may be survivors, but that's a best case scenario. We're going in to secure the site. Neutralize all hostile contacts. Menace 1-5. Hostile forces are attacking the outpost. Eliminate all enemy units and protect those civilians. Advent came in hot and so did we. You won't have a concealed position for deployment on this one. And welcome back. It looks like we're on another Haven defense mission. And uh, is it just me or does this look very familiar? I'm pretty sure this is the same exact starting point we had in our first Haven defense mission. For a game with a procedurally generated map system, we seem to be getting a lot of repeats pretty early on. Hey, they fixed their garage door. Good for them. All right, looks like there's no one inside, so let's get up top. To that position. Moving out. Will do. Got it. Rolling out. Yikes, look at that pod. There's our first Berserker, backed up by two Mutons. Sorry, Raffy Hamden, you are destined to die. Alright, let's move up to the edge of the building and... Oh, well that was quick. Looks like we've got an advanced trooper and a stun lancer. I think we can handle that. I'll take a shot with Monks if I have to, but let's see what the other guys can do first. Looks like Razael's got a 50-50 shot at taking out that trooper, so let's try that. Nicely done. Alright, well, let's go ahead and have Mox take out that Stun Lancer then. Solid effort, poor follow-through. Someone else will have to finish the job. I'm on it. There we go. First pod dispatched. Let's go ahead and move the rest of the squad up a little bit, but we don't want to move too far. We don't want to accidentally trigger another pod just yet. Hmm, there's that muton pod again. They're getting closer. Well, they're headed right for that cluster of survivors, so we need to get down there and confront them. Berserkers. They can't do much from range, but they're lethal up close. Uh-oh, and there's another pod right behind them. Okay, the Berserker ran off somewhere, so that means we can focus on the Mutons for the moment. I should be able to clear the majority of their cover with a single grenade. Yeah, that should be just about perfect. Let's see here. Obviously, Razael doesn't have much of an open shot from where he is, so let's move some of the other guys up. On the move. That takes care of one muton. Now I need to move someone else up so they can get line of sight on that second muton, 
but I don't want to move too far forward or we'll activate that other pod that was right behind them. Well, let's bring Malachi up while I'm thinking about it. He won't be able to shoot this turn, but he'll be ready next turn. On Overwatch. Okay, let's go ahead and bring Mox down next to Demon, and hopefully he'll be able to take out that other Muton in one shot. You must run. Very good. Now I just need to worry about that Berserker. On my way. Just had to kill another civilian, huh? Oh, and here she comes. Well, that went pretty well. We managed to take out about two-thirds of her health on approach. And we got a good look at the pod that's behind her, too. One mech and one purifier. We'll start moving our guys up to the edge of the roof, take out that berserker, and uh, maybe we'll go ahead and trigger the next pod as well. Hmm. Okay, well... Mox didn't finish her off, but she's poisoned, so she should drop dead next turn anyway. Oh shoot, where'd that loot come from? Okay, well, um, we've only got one turn to grab it, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and do a tremendously risky thing here and have Raziel go scoop that up. Hmm, nothing great, but... That focus implant will be useful once we can get psychics. I'm sure the docs will want to see this. Obviously, at this point, we don't want to trigger that next pod, so let's just go ahead and set our guys all into Overwatch. Overwatch. I'd like to move Demon up a little, but there are no good spots for him, so he'll just hold position. And there goes the Berserker. And, uh... It's taken a while with the alien turn here. I hope the game didn't just lock up on me. Hey, there we go. That was definitely pretty weird. Let's uh, just hope that doesn't happen again. Okay, at this point we want to engage that next pod, but we also want to start scooping up survivors because we're actually starting to cut things pretty close. We don't have much more margin for error. Nice, Raziel nets us two survivors. And let's bring Demon down to grab this third one. Heading out. Go, you're safe. Go. And I I'm not seeing any other survivors nearby. We've got that one over there. But we're not going to get to him in one turn, so Let's just start moving in that direction. Oh shoot, and there's that other pod. And I guess they had their own Berserker. That's, uh, that's bad news. At least the Berserker ran off in the opposite direction. That means we can focus on the mech and the purifier for now. Fortunately, Phoenix was one of the first soldiers to take advantage of our new training facilities, so this is a good chance for him to try out Haywire Protocol.
Well, it's definitely tempting to try to control the mech, but I think we're better off with the guaranteed chance to stun it. That gets the mech out of the way for a couple of turns, so now we can focus our attention on that purifier, and if we've got any attacks left after that, we can set up for the Berserker. I guess we can risk a 50-50 shot. And the risk didn't pay off this time. Oh well. Let's see if Rorschach can land a hit on him. Very nice, that takes off most of his health, but we still need to tap him one more time. Fortunately, Mox can make two more attacks, so that should... No? Okay, he missed the first one. And he has to reload. Good work, Mox. Oof. And now we've got a faceless on the board. And there's another Berserker pod on the field. XCOM, you gotta give me a break here. Too close to the heat. Okay, I think we can handle this. No one is injured. We've still got that mech locked down for one more turn. Let's start picking these guys off one by one. First, I think we'll take out that purifier before he can set anything else on fire. Let's go ahead and use his Whiplash ability to take out that mech, too. Or not. I will not fail you again. Okay, well, at this point we need to focus on the Berserker and the Faceless in that order. I guess we'll have Demon start the assault. Nice, there's a solid 8 damage. And Mox has a 99% chance to hit, so you better not miss this one, buddy. That's another pretty solid hit. Let's go ahead and have Rorschach finish it off. And now we can focus on the Faceless. Target neutralized. Running low on ammo. I can ignore the mech for now, so let's move Razael over near this window. Moving out. And he can take a quick shot at the Faceless with his pistol. For all the good it did us. Well, let's pull Phoenix back to a safe distance and then he can take a shot at it. On the move. <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess Razael wanted to see how it's done. Uh-oh. I was really hoping that mech would be out for one more turn. Okay, Mox and Rorschach just both took moderate wounds. We lost another civilian. 
and we've got two immediate threats to deal with. Let's see what we can do here. Let's start by having Mox finish off this faceless. There we go. Now we can focus on taking out that mech. Oh, I should have had Demon take the shot first. He could have shredded its armor. Well, better late than never. Now we do need to start moving up. We can only afford to lose two more civilians. But I don't want to leave anyone behind, so let's spend this turn healing and regrouping. Heading there now. Got it covered. Go medical. Yikes, okay. Now we can only afford to lose one more civilian, so we need to start pushing forward aggressively. Yes, Commander. I reload. Position confirmed. Moving. On your order. I'm on it. Affirmative. Covering now. Overwatch. Ready to rock. Back online. And now we can't afford to lose any more civilians. Well, we just need to keep moving forward. Let's go ahead and move Razael up on top of this RV. Hopefully he can get visual. No visual on the enemies, but we can see a survivor. Maybe if the pod moves up to kill that survivor, they'll spot us. Then they might engage us instead of killing more survivors. Fingers crossed. I will not waver. Scanning cover. I'm on it. Scanning. Got it covered. There's something out there. Well, no sign of the enemy pod, but they didn't kill any survivors either. So that does give us a little more time. In fact, we can see both of the remaining survivors right over there. Oh wait, but there's another survivor over here. The counter says there's only two left, but we see three on the field. Gosh, I wonder what that could mean. On your order. Regardless, we need to start moving to rescue these guys. We'll just have to be ready for when one of them turns into a ten-foot-tall killing machine. I go. Hmm, the camera's getting kind of obnoxious here. I'm not sure why it keeps going for these extreme close-ups. some nice dramatic camera work too. Armor still holding. Come on, focus. I did nothing. Okay, well that 
could have definitely gone better, but at least they didn't kill anyone. And I think I'm getting the inklings of a plan here. First, we're going to drop our last grenade over here. That'll theoretically finish off the first Muton and soften up the Berserker. Heading out. Catch. So far, so good. The Muton survived, but the Acid will kill him next turn. Now I need to do something about that other Muton. I don't have a good angle on him, and I can't blade rush him. Melee attacks are pretty much useless against these guys. Oh, but what about... Hold on. Can I... No, not over there. Yes, there we go. Grapple is a free action, so Mox can still take two attacks after moving to that position. And now he's flanking the Muton. Nice. That just leaves us with the Berserker. Uh, and uh, whichever one of these guys happens to be a faceless. Roger that. Huh, I forgot to make sure that Rorschach would have line of sight. And a miss. Well, I've still got two guys who can make attacks on the Berserker, so let's hope it's enough. It's still standing, but not for long. And there's that Faceless we knew was coming. But at this point, I think we've pretty much got this mission in the bag. Let's take this guy out, and we can all go home. Locked and loaded. Menace 1 5, status confirmed. We're not picking up any additional contacts. The AO is clear. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Wow, we were really down to the wire there. Citizens of Advent. Despite the best efforts of our noble peacekeepers, their work today to wipe clear an unauthorized camp belonging to criminal elements outside the city was thwarted by the barbaric group XCOM. No, that we will not be deterred by this ongoing campaign against peace. I'm a little surprised the Warlock didn't show up, but honestly, I'm not complaining. That was close enough as it is. Looks like promotions for everyone but Demon, so let's get started. Now Phoenix gets to choose between Covering Fire or Threat Assessment. And I'm just not much a fan of Covering Fire. It triggers against foes who are often already undercover, so you're usually not going to hit with it. In comparison, I feel like Threat Assessment has a lot more tactical flexibility, so I almost always go with that one. Obviously, Rorschach is going to get Shadow Step. And Raziel will get Long Watch. And Mox, let's see here. Wow, okay, he's got 26 action points to work with. His new perks are Combat Presence, which grants an extra action to an ally, Retribution, which gives him a free melee attack against enemies who enter melee range, Interrupt, which lets him perform actions during Overwatch instead of just firing, and Saturation Fire, which lets him fire in a cone-shaped area. 
And then... Hmm. Given the perks we've picked up so far, I think Retribution is a no-brainer. But... I'm not sure what to use the rest of his points on. Still not a fan of Reflex. Total combat's not terrible. Zero in is a bit too situational. Full throttle, I'm not a fan of. Um, let's go ahead and grab... Interrupt, I think. Good enough. Moving on. Operation Broken Doom was a success, but only just barely. Mox and Rorschach were both wounded, and over half the truck thieves were dead. There were still enough of them to continue their illicit activities, but that wasn't saying much. It was becoming increasingly obvious that Advent was targeting our operations more and more aggressively, and the Chosen were leading their efforts. Mordena was ambushing our men and attacking the Avenger, and Don Slayer was slaughtering our civilian contacts left and right. Enough was enough. It was time to finish establishing contact with that resistance cell in New Brazil so we could finally start pushing back against Advent.